Hi guys, Aaron Dorr here with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. With the August 2nd primary coming fast, many gun owners in Senate District Number 16 are asking us, who is the pro-gun candidate between incumbent state senator Justin Brown and challenger and current state rep Susie Pollack? So this video is for you if you live in any one of these following counties over here, kind of in central Missouri. It's Wright County, Lee County, Pulaski, Marie's, Phelps, and Dent. So if you live in this area or know a gun owner who does, make sure and watch this video and share it with all of your friends. So again, the question is not just who says they're pro-gun. The question you're asking us is who will fight for our gun rights? And alongside of that, who do we trust? How do we know? Because every candidate says they're pro-gun at election time, especially in a Republican Party primary. This video is going to answer those questions, not with our personal opinion, not with spin, but with real facts. And you guys can then take those facts and decide for yourselves who is the pro-gun candidate. We'll begin with Susie Pollack, Representative Susie Pollack. Now, Susie's been in the State House for the last couple of years, and she's cast votes when it comes to gun issues, so we have actual facts to examine here. Before we break those down, though, you should know that Susie Pollack has surveyed 100% pro-gun with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. Now, what does that mean? We ask the candidates every two years at election time, 10 questions. On these 10 issues, the hot button issues of the day for gun owners, how would you vote? And when a candidate won't survey, that's almost always a sign they intend to screw us over once they're safely in office. But in Susie's case, she surveyed 100%. And what that means is she's on the record publicly opposing red flag gun seizures, opposing any attempt to raise the age on when Missourians can buy firearms, opposed to any attempt to ban AR-15s, and especially opposed to any attempt to overturn some or all of Missouri's best in the nation Second Amendment Preservation Act. You can see her survey on our website, and perhaps if you're watching this in an email blast, you can perhaps see it beneath this video here as well. So number one, she surveyed 100% with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. That tells you a lot about her mentality when it comes to gun rights. But in the case of Susie Pollack, as a, as a current state rep, we have actual votes to look at, not just promises on future activities. You should know that in 2021, when we were working our tails off to pass the Second Amendment Preservation Act, there was a lot of Republican rhinos in the House and in the Senate who are working overtime trying to shut the bill down. And it was conservative leaders in both those chambers who went to war against those rhinos and said, we're going to do this whether you like it or not. If you want to vote no, fine, vote no, and you'll be held accountable. But we're going to get this done for gun owners here in Missouri. One of those leaders was Susie Pollack, who helped push this bill across the finish line. And the story there is pretty intense because this bill was the first major social issues bill the House passed at all in 2021. It happened in early February, and we knew that with the, with the House being the more conservative chamber, we were going to need a long time to pass the bill in the Senate. And so we had to get this done, and it had to happen fast. And Susie Pollack is one of the main reasons why we got SAPA out of the House as fast as we did. That was 2021. Now fast forward to this year, 2022. A lot of you know we're trying to fix the problems with Missouri's self-defense laws. Well, Missouri has stand your ground law, and there's no need to retreat if you're attacked in public. The problem we have with our self-defense laws is that the burden of proof lies with you, or it lies with me. So if I draw my firearm and I, and I aim it at a criminal who's trying to attack me or my family, or if I actually shoot him in a self-defense situation, here in Missouri, the burden of proof is on me. I have to prove. You have to prove that you're innocent. Of course, this, uh, this country is based on the idea that we're innocent until proven guilty. And in many states right now, they have shifted this burden. So in dozens of states all around Missouri, it's the government's job to prove you're guilty, not your job to prove that you're innocent. Imagine the case of Mark McCloskey, right, and the hell that he went through here in Missouri trying to prove his innocence. Our bill this session in Jeff City would, repeat, would, would fix all that and repeal the current process that we have and give us a real stand your ground law that protects our freedoms. Susie Pollack was one of the leading co-sponsors of that bill 
and understands that we have got to fix this because if you're in the wrong county, right, if you're in a blue county right now in Missouri and you draw and display, let alone use your firearm in a self-defense situation, a blue prosecutor like Kim Gardner could ruin the rest of your life. We have got to fix this problem. And Susie Pollack is not only a supporter of that, she fought for that bill, she co-sponsored that bill, and, ple and pledges to do so again if elected by the voters. That's Susie Pollack, 100% pro-gun, with a history of fighting for gun rights. What about Justin Brown? What about Justin Brown? If you know Justin Brown, and you know he's, he, he tells everybody how he's pro-gun, He's pro-gun. I'm pro-gun. And he has other national organizations who have never set foot in the state capitol here in Missouri in years that have come out and endorsed him. The question is, what has he actually done in Jeff City and how can you trust the guy? Well, number one, Justin Brown is refusing to fill out his Missouri Firearms Coalition candidate survey. As I told you a minute ago, when a candidate won't survey, it's almost always an indication that they will betray you, betray gun owners, if they're in office. And they don't want to break a written promise that they made when they do that. They figure it's easier to simply not survey, and that way when we screw over gun owners down the road, they can't hold up my survey and come after me for breaking my written promise. Justin Brown will not survey. So when it comes to red flag gun seizures, how would Justin Brown vote? He won't say. This is very important right now. Don't forget, in, in D.C., Joe Biden just signed a massive federal gun control bill voted on by Roy Blunt. Thank you very much for that, Roy, before you leave the state of Missouri and head to Washington, D.C. for the rest of your life. This federal gun control bill gives almost a billion dollars to the federal government, and they can use that to bribe red states like Missouri that pass red flag laws. And anti-gun rhinos in Jeff City would love to get their hands on that money. And so we're trying to ask Justin Brown, how would you vote on that? When they're dangling tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in your face, how would you vote? He won't answer that. As you guys know, many rhinos in Jeff City, like Caleb Rowden, the, the leadership team in the Senate, have openly talked about wanting to repeal some or all of Missouri's Second Amendment Preservation Act. We asked Justin Brown, would you vote yes or no on any attempt to repeal SEPA? Justin Brown will not answer the question. But folks, we have a lot more than just survey results when it comes to Justin Brown. I told you how Pollock was a leader in the fight for SEPA law in 2021. We had a three-month battle, as you guys probably remember, in the Senate to pass that bill. SEPA only passed the last couple of hours in that 2021 session. We had over a half a dozen rhino Republicans in the Senate working overtime to kill that bill behind closed doors. Justin Brown was one of those Republicans who was working overtime behind the scenes to shut down SEPA. He damn near got away with it. He didn't. But folks, that's the kind of guy Justin Brown is, worked hard to kill SEPA behind closed doors. But there's a lot more than that. A lot more than that. I mentioned our problems with stand your ground law and how Pollock wants to improve, strengthen, and enhance Missouri's stand your ground law. Justin Brown is the chairman of the committee where, SEPA, where, our, where our stand your ground law bill was heard this year in Jefferson City. This was his committee. The bill number was SB 666. And guys, as you may remember, this was an incredibly nasty committee hearing that went on for two hours in Jefferson City. The bill sponsor is Eric Burleson, Senator Eric Burleson. The committee was convened and it became apparent immediately this was a kill committee. And, and more, more than that, folks, it was an ambush committee. This was a two hour long bash fest organized by Justin Brown as the chairman to attack Stand Your Ground Law, to attack uh, Eric Burleson, and to attack all the gun owners, a lot of you folks who were there, who were pushing for this bill. We, you, all of us were called racist for supporting this bill. We were called homophobic for pushing for this bill. We, were, uh, we hated everybody, according to all the lobbyists who were there. Now, it's not uncommon to see that kind of animosity in a committee hearing. But ordinarily, the committee chairman will slam the gavel, call the meeting to order, and shut down testifiers who are going way out of bounds on the scope of this committee. 
Justin Brown sat back and laughed the entire time these folks were taking a sledgehammer to stand your ground law. It was designed on purpose to attack the bill. And then, of course, it became a national news story uh, as to what happened in the committee hearing room. That is Justin Brown. It was a terrible, terrible performance on his part. It was designed on purpose to ambush the bill. But Justin knew he was going to have a primary. So what he did after the public hearing was he convened another committee hearing, another vote on this bill two weeks later, and here's what he did. It's devious stuff. This committee is GOP controlled. It's Missouri. All committees are GOP controlled. So Justin Brown, behind closed doors, before that committee, worked with two other Republicans on the committee, Senator Lincoln Huff, Senator Jason Bean, and he confirmed they would be a no vote on the bill. That would give, between those two rhinos and the Democrats, enough votes to kill the bill. He then convenes the vote. Justin Brown votes yes, fearing this Republican Party primary here today, and he has all of his allies vote no and kill the bill. You see how that works? You see how devious that is? Justin Brown used his power as that chairman to kill SB 666 in a way he hoped that would not be uh, trackable back to him. But folks, he was not counting on us. This was a horrendous attack on senior ground law. Justin Brown always knew what he was doing. He did it because at the end of the day, that's the kind of anti-gun rhino Justin Brown is. Of course, days later, he files his own sham stand your ground law bill. It's a terrible bill designed to be held up at election time as cover. But make no mistake, when, we, when he was in a position to fight for stand your ground law, Justin Brown killed the bill. So as a brief recap, with Susie Pollock, you have a 100% pro-gun survey, a person who has fought to pass SEPA, to, to successfully pass SEPA, a person who fought to expand stand your ground law, and is on the record opposing red flag gun seizures and any attempt to repeal some or all of Missouri's SEPA law. And when it comes to Justin Brown, he will not survey. He tried very hard to kill SEPA in 2021, and this year he personally personally killed Stand Your Ground Law, which would protect us from these out-of-control, Soros-funded prosecutors. So if you see Justin Brown, be sure and tell him he needs to apologize for his history of attacking your gun rights. He needs to apologize for not signing the candidate survey, and he needs to, needs to apologize for his actions this session attacking and killing Stand Your Ground Law. If you see Susie Pollack, be sure and thank her for her support, thank her for surveying 100%, and for her actions that helped us pass SEPA law last year. Guys, that's our report in this race. Thank you for your time and watching all of this. Do me a favor, share this video on social media, get the word out there about this race, and join our cause today, guys, at www.joinmofc.com.